Are you having trouble finding your property? Say you have a mineral deed or you're being paid on a well or you have a lease or someone sends you an offer and you're like, I don't even know where this is. I'm gonna use examples that are sent in by you. It's gonna be a real chit chatty video. Go ahead and grab a cup of coffee. I will put chapters in the description below so you can jump to things that are interesting to you. So the first property will be one in Midland County. So that's in Texas, West Texas. This particular viewer sent in their property and had a specific question and looks like she is looking to find these particular wells with this information. So driller unknown, operator is Pioneer. We have a well name, we have an API number, which I'll explain what that is a little later. We have the county section abstract and field. I will also explain what those things are as we go along. And looks like there's two wells. I'm guessing that she got this information because they sent her message, like a, a mail or something saying, hey, we're wanting to drill these wells. And now she's like, well, where, where is this? So I'm starting with this particular example because it should be relatively easy to find on a map. But we will also show how to dig a little more into that um, because you should know more than just where the well is. You should know how you own something in that well if you're receiving division orders. The Stimson Nail Well. So we're gonna look at the well name and just go from there because that's the simplest thing that usually people have. It's usually on like the header of a division order. It's usually on your pay statement. So we'll start with well name. So I'll be using our free tool to find this property. I'll also be using some other tools as I go along, but we'll start here because I know this tool the best. The, this is free, like I said, you can create an account for free. You can do all the stuff I'm gonna show you for free. I won't be showing you anything that you can't do for free today because that's not the point of this. Uh, we are starting in Texas. So I'm gonna drop down and go to Texas. Let's see. I want to, yeah, so Stimson, S-T-I-M-S-O-N. So we are we know it's in Midland County, so we're gonna drop down to Midland County on the left here. That will zoom us right in. This colored heat map is showing our estimate of dollar per acre, like how much the acreage is worth. If you're wanting to get that feel for high value, low value, you can keep it on. If it's in the way, you can hit toggle layer and that will hide it. So we wanna go to, we know the well name. We also know some other stuff. We could search by parcel also, but it sounds like we're focusing on the wells for this particular instance. So we'll go to well name and search Stimson. I always wanna say Simpson. So I probably, did I write Stimson? Yes, okay. So I hit search and it is searching for that well. It's looking through all the well names in the county that we have in our system. If it's new enough that it's not public data yet, then it might not show up on here. So I will show you what to do if that's the case. Usually if there's one well named it, there's other wells named it. So we have a lot of wells in this area. So Stimson Nail was particularly what we were looking for. So here's the Stimson Nail and E17K11H. E17K11H. And you can, you can, also filter down and, and type more precisely. But for this particular example, if we'd not put in the dash and there was a dash or, or vice versa, it might've filtered it out accidentally. We're still working on the fuzzy logic on this search, but it's better than nothing. So click that and it will take you directly to that well. So here we go. Here's the Stimson nail E17. There's a bunch of wells here. So you can keep zooming in if you need to get a little more detail. So E1711H, okay. So this is this well here. So it the surface location is where the dot is. So all of these have dots uh, where the line starts. So that's the surface. So that's where the well head's coming out of the ground and where the drilling rig is actually physically located if you were to drive up there. Uh, and then this line is the direction of the well. So where the drill bit is going down into the ground and curving around and creating a well path. That is this well here. So I'm just gonna make a quick highlight just to circle that well while we're here. Um, this well path is, so it's going down. You can, you can do the well path. I happen to know that when you have a straight line from here to here, it's gonna look like these wells that are they go out and then up and it runs parallel to the section lines. The reason that it's a straight line from here to here is because they haven't filed the directional survey showing exactly where the drill bit is in the ground. And so they're just connecting the surface to the tail of the well. So you can either select that or select um, 
we'll just select the well like that. So we'll go ahead and save that as the stems and nail. And do we have any information on? No, we don't have any information on ownership. So we're just going to ignore that part of here and save that. So I'm going to make a portfolio for this particular exercise. So finding wells and property. Great. So now I'm click off and go down and add that Stimson nail to that portfolio. Save. All right, so now we have this finding wells and property example portfolio that we can just use for all, all these things. And I'll be sending these properties to the people who submitted it. So they'll, they'll get a copy of what we end up coming to together on today's video. So if we go back to, so that's the first well. So that's the first well, the Stimson nail. And then we also have the Stimson W17A1H. Let's go back and we'll just look at this property to see if it's the same area or if it's a different prop area. So I can see, um, we can zoom in on this area and just see around here. So we had Stimson W17A1H. So if you look at these, you'll see Stimson E as the beginning of all these. The unit is probably the Stimson E. I'm gonna to go to the permit. So you can get a lot of information by going to the Railroad Commission's permits for these wells. Eventually we will have these links available in our tool, but for now it is what it is. So we wanna to go to the Railroad Commission of Texas because this well is in Texas and we're going to go to the public GIS viewer. That's just kind of the easiest way to get to these things. We're already looking at it on the map. And so launch the public viewer. This has a search. Uh, you can find the Weller API and We'll actually do that. The API number is the American Petroleum Institute naming convention for the well. It's state specific. So even though it's supposed to be a, a guideline for all wells in the country, each state kind of implements it slightly differently. My mom told me my lips were too dry on my videos. So I'm working on that. But also I never wear lipstick. And so that might look different at the end of this if I end up wiping it off. But okay, continuing. So we have the API number. So let's just go ahead and plug that into the Railroad Commission website. If I can get this to line up to where we can see both. There we go. Okay, so we will type in four, two. So the first two numbers are the state that it's in. So four, two is Texas. And then the next three numbers are the county it's in. So three, two, nine must be Midland County. And then the last five digits are a unique well number, the 45429, 45429. That is the wells number in that county. So by having those, you know the well, you know the county, and you know the state. There's sometimes numbers beyond those first 10 numbers. And that's sometimes called the API 12 or the API 14. So sometimes you'll see 0000, zero, zero, zero added onto the end. And that you get into more of like what completion is it for the well or uh, if they had to redrill the well, this is the second time they drilled it or this is a different zone within the same well. And there's, it gets complicated beyond that. But if you're looking at an individual well bore, these first 10 numbers, it should be unique to that well bore. Okay, so we'll hit search. I don't actually use this too often. We'll see how, how quickly it gets to it. Did it not work? We also know where it is. So we know that's up here. This is the problem with their Railroad Commission website is it just, it's uh, a little messy. If we go back, we can see it's section. So abstract is kind of like the key code for when they, when they, it's almost like the unique identifier for that particular plot of land. So if you are looking at abstract 152, you want to narrow it down as close as you can, but then you could find that abstract and say, okay, that's this plot of land. So abstract is a good thing to use or section. We'll go to section seven. Usually there's additional uh, information rather than just section, but um, like sur what survey it's in or block and range. Section 17, we will just, we know we're around here. Section 17. We're looking at these little red numbers are the section numbers 
on the Railroad Commission website, and we can go back to ours and zoom out and see where we are in relation to the, the county line here. All right, so we are right there kind of at the county line, north, east, midland. Um, this is only going to show the wells in a certain radius. Okay, so let's go to northeast of midland. And just Okay, so over here. Okay, so here's, here's section 17. So these are probably the Stimson wells, if we were to zoom in. Again, it's kind of hard to see with how they have it laid out. But we can click the little info button up here and say, I want to look at the wells and identify as you hover over. Let's see. Is this going to work for me? You have to go to the, the bottom hole location. It looks like a... Uh, We'll go to the bottom hole. It just has the well number. It doesn't have all the information, but if you wanted to look at the permit for this well, you could click it. And this gets you to the Railroad Commission information on that well. Again, there's other ways to get to this information. I'm visual, so I like to go through maps, but you can also do searches in the Railroad Commission um, database. So the Stimson nail, this is a slightly different well. This is the, the L but it's probably part of the same unit. So we're gonna go to the permit for that well. And when you get to the permit, it'll pop up this information window here. And you just wanna click on the lease name. And this will give you information about what type of well was permitted. And you could ignore most of this. Um, this allocation is probably of use to you, but if you scroll all the way down and look at something called plat, that's, that's, this is where you're gonna get the most bang for your buck on these websites, because a lot of this is just gibberish for people who aren't actively using it. Um, but the plat gives you a, a fancy map. So this is how you get to the fancy map. And that has it officially laid out, and it's very tiny. I'm gonna zoom in. And now you can see much easier the well names and the units that are formed. And remember, this was an allocation well, and so it's gonna show what areas it's allocating to where the surface location starts and where the first take point is. So FTP is first take point. This is where it starts entering the well bore, uh, entering the reservoir and how you know the difference between it going into the ground and actually draining from the reservoir. So if you are in this section down here, so section 17, uh, you actually probably wouldn't be getting paid for these wells at all if you're in section 17 because it doesn't start draining the reservoir until the section just north of it. So if you're being told that you have an interest in this well, you probably don't have ownership down here. You probably have ownership somewhere in this like hashed box here. So here, how it has this, this hashing. So this is going up into Martin County here. So it's, you kind of have to turn your head a little bit. Uh, so this is the abstract number, this A1213, A637, and uh, I saw it somewhere. Where did it go? Oh, 293. So you probably have ownership somewhere in these boxes here. Now, where in those boxes would be where you would want to um, do some title research, see if you see any deeds or leases or something that gives you a hint. Maybe you're getting paid in another well somewhere in these two sections. If you're getting paid on, if you're being told that you're gonna have interest in one of these wells and there's this allocation thing, you probably will get paid on all the wells that are also included in that box. Depending on how your acreage is actually outlined, maybe you own all the south half of this section here. You'd own these wells and these wells. So I don't have a whole lot of information from this on what exactly her question is on these wells, but let's say that she She's getting paid on these two wells and is trying to find her property. So we're gonna outline the allocation unit for the Stimson um, 17K11H, which again, we, we located at here, it's this one. They're all stacked on top of each other. Like if you were to cut through the reservoir, you'd see like well bores dotting different depths. But when you look straight down on the reservoir, you um, straight down on a map, they're all laid on top of each other, but they actually are targeting different depths the usually somewhere in the name, it's telling you what depth it is. And I'm not actually seeing it. And this one looks like they're just going through the alphabet for the well names here. But let's see. So we're going to outline, we're going to go back to the pecan estimate. And it looks like all of the east half of these two um, sections. So if I zoom out on this plat, 
the east half of these two sections are the properties that are being combined together for payment on this well. And an allocation well means that it's going to depend on how much of that well is in that property is how much of payment you get. So if they stopped short drilling, you would get less if they didn't make it all the way through your property. So let's go ahead and outline the entire east half of both of these sections. It's not exactly the east half on, it's a little, it's not exactly a straight line, but we're gonna get just get close enough. So I'm going to edit this and move this to be the entire east half. And it's probably not all the way over there. It probably starts about there. And move this to the east half here. Okay, and I hit save. So her property is somewhere in here. Now, if we go to that other well and say the Stimson seven, um, W17A1H, let's find that one on the Railroad Commission map. Again, I have other shortcuts that I usually use. So if I'm kind of fumbling around on this, I'm trying not to use things that only I have access to. So that's why. Uh, okay, so let's go to, so it didn't find that last location. I, I wonder if they have the API numbers in here. So let's just look for, uh, maybe it's looking for sometimes. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Uh, a lot of these state searches, you're on the state site itself. And so it doesn't care about the first two numbers of the API because it's like, yeah, I know the first two numbers are four, two, every single well in our database have a, has a, has a starting of four, two. So just skip that point. It's looking for the API number. You can tell by this here that it's ignoring the first four, two, and it's just jumping straight to the three, two, nine. And so that was why I couldn't find that last well. So we're going to skip the first four, first four, two, on this one and just put in 329-45506. There we go, see that worked. Um, if I zoom out, that has the well down here. So here's the section, here's the Stimson well we were just looking at that's going up into Martin County. And here is this well coming down into this county you might see that this is not overlapping at all. So there's probably two different properties that we're looking at here that this particular individual has an interest in. But we can click on this well and go to drilling permit. It'll pop up this little thing, the Stimson. And if you have multiple ones listed here, pick on uh, click the one that's lowest because that's the most recent. So the bottom one, click on that lease name, another allocation well. Again, we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom, look for something called plat. Uh, so here's plat. So a plat is just a map, it's a survey. You can think of it. Click on that and that's gonna pull up the plat for that unit which is again gonna show us all the properties that are being combined together to say who's gonna get paid for this well. So if you're getting paid on a well, you know that you must be somewhere in this outline. So once again, we have a weird, we kind of have a weird outline here. Let me make this a little. So if I zoom in on this, the hashed member from the last one, we have the surface location. We have it going out this way. Um, as it goes down into the, into getting to the depth, so this is where the wellhead is, where the drilling rig is. It's going down to get deep, and then it curves and turns and comes this way, where the first take point is, uh, looks like, okay, that arrow's pointing to here. So here's the first take point. Let me turn on my little special highlighter thing. So the first take point is FTP. First take point is the first time it hits the reservoir and starts draining, starts taking from the point it's taking from the reservoir. So this is the start of who should be paid for the oil. So the fact that it's going into this little section up here, it's not taking any oil from this section up here. It's just using it as like a highway to get to the place it's getting the oil from. So it's only hashing around the people who will get paid for this wells for this particular well. And so this, this, and also just pointing it out, even though there's multiple wells in this allocation unit, 
each well might have a different allocation unit. That's just the nature of it. So even though this well has this unit around it, this well might have a different unit around it. And this well might have a different unit around it. It's just kind of allocated based on the lands that the well bore is passing through. There's pros and cons of allocation wells. So they are grouping together the lands that it's passing through and telling you how big each tract is. There's tract numbers. So it starts off with this real skinny uh, hash and then goes to a bigger hash and then comes back in. So let's go ahead and draw that on the map. I will show you. Uh, we'll go ahead and create a new property for this one. So we'll go back to Texas. This is going to be a long video. Sorry. <laughs> Go back to Midland. It was right north of it, near the county line, around here. So it's this Stimson well here. Look, it's the it's the west quarter of this section. Then approximately the north half, and then the north half of the southwest quarter down here. So we'll say west quarter-ish here down to here. We don't have to get exact, remember. And then we're taking the whole of the half up here. And then we're taking the north half of the bottom here. So that is the approximate unit for the Stimson. What was it? Stimson? We'll just call it Stimson <laughs> and go from there. Okay, let me add that to our portfolio. So her properties are somewhere in those outlines. And so the next step I would recommend is going into something like Texas file or county records. And like my favorite is just going to Texas file and looking up either the trust or the heirs or your name and trying to find what legal document would describe any acreage that's within these outlines. And so that's how you'd find your property. Theoretically, you should be getting paid on anything else that's that uh, once you find your property, you should be getting paid on anything that's that's also included in that. That's probably a video on its own. So with that, let's hop to the next, um, the next property. We do have a meets and bounds one coming up. I am saving that. So this question is similar to the last one, except this one, she has the legal description. So we'll just read it. Um, I have an operator who's putting up rigs and getting permits on my property in Culberson County, and I'm trying to find out if it matches what you were describing about a woman who had horizontal wells going, off, going across her property in Ward County. This is my le legal description, three tracts of land in Block 58, Township 2, TMP um, Survey, Culberson County, Texas. And her operator is Capitan Energy. Here are her tracts of land. So this is what she knows that she owns. And then there's apparently a Chevron permit that's nearby. And she wants to know if she should have interest in these wells, it sounds like. These look like they're nearby to each other. So we'll go ahead and move this to where we can see both at once. We will start a new search. Again, going back to my tool, select state, Texas. Go to Culverson, which is way out here. <laughs> And we are going to use the parcel search this time. So I'll make this a little smaller so we can see. And this is three tracts of land all in this block and township and survey. So we're going to search for the difficulty with this is knowing exactly what to search for. So we're just going to start with 58 and see what that filters down to because we know it's block 58. Okay, so TMP, RR Co, railroad, that's a railroad survey. Um, we know that it's Township 2, so we can say 58T2, so that filters it down more. And all of these will be, these are all the different sections in Block 58 Township 2. So if we go back over, and sometimes they're listed multiple times because a single section might be broken up in multiple different ways, and we'll, we'll probably see examples of that. We go back over to here, we have sections 28, 32, and 34. So let's go ahead and just say, we'll start with 28, the first one, and click, and it will zoom us right to that count, that section. Okay, I'll make this bigger now so we can see. So you can toggle off, like I said, this thing, make it a little cleaner. So this gray 
text right here is the description over here. So 28 is this middle section here. Let's see, we have the other two were 32 and 34. Usually they're touching. So let's see, we have 32 is over here. And 34 is over here. Well, that's interesting. It kind of zigzags like that, huh? Okay, so let's zoom out a little bit and we will go ahead and all of 28, 32, and 34, the permits are in section 34. Okay, so here's 34. I bet it's these purple wells is what she's talking about. So let's go ahead and go back to here. Let's not jump ahead too much. We'll go to drawing and draw approximately since these are all close to each other, I'll show you how we can draw multiple sections in one property here just by kind of jumping around. And All right, so now we have 32, 28, and 34. I'm going to double click to close that, and we'll call this the... I always want to spell Culverson wrong. Um, I, I always want to put a B where there's supposed to be a V. Culverson? Culverson. Culverson. I'm an engineer. Call Burson. Okay, call Burson. All right, we don't know how much or what type of interest, so we're just going to leave that by default and hit save. So now I can show you uh, what's going on here. We'll go ahead and add this to our portfolio of ones we're looking at. So what's happening is in section 34, we will pull this up here. Uh, I wonder if I can make this to where we can see both. That kind of works. Yeah, okay, we'll do that. So she is saying that Chevron has a permit in block 34, oh, sorry, section 34, and the lease names are different than hers, and there's also a permit in section 23. So if we look at 34, and then if we look at 33, uh, 23, that should be this right here. Section 23 is over here, I believe. Did she possibly mean 33? Well, we'll go ahead and, or maybe 32. So yeah, there's there's a lot going on in this area, but we'll zoom in a little bit and kind of show you what's going on. We touched a little bit about this in the prior example where we looked at the plat. Um, we will also probably pull up that same thing here. And I will show you a shortcut on how to get to, I feel like since I showed it to you once, I can use a shortcut now. <laughs> I go um, back. So on this page, you can just, the first three numbers here are the county and the last five are the well. And so if you happen to know the county and the well, you can jump straight to this permit page. So we're going to use that little shortcut real quick. I'm gonna pause and I will get right back to this. Okay, I'm back. I have the permit pulled up now for this Chevron well. And yep, that um, we are now looking at this well here that's starts in her property and then goes up into this property. And I can see, I definitely know how that's confusing as to, okay, should I, should I or should I not be getting paid for that well? So that's when you, if you go to the permit on the well and you click that, and like I said, um, if you just zoom to the bottom of this page, look for something called plat, click it. That's honestly all, I'm, all I ever really look at on this. There's other information, but we're just gonna do the simple part today. Okay, this will give you the information on who should be being paid, where the service location is, and where that first take point is. First and last take point are the things that matter the most. Um, other abbreviations you might see are PP for penetrate, usually that's penetration point. Where, oh, here we go, yeah, PP penetration point. So this survey actually has what these mean. So we have first take point, last take point, terminus location, which is the end of the well, and then we have um, upper perforation, lower perforation, bottom hole location, all things that matter as to who's getting paid and where the well is actually going. But if we look at here, the, okay, so penetration point is their, what they're calling where it's hitting the, the reservoir, but surface location's way over here. So if you were to go out and touch the wellhead and see where the drilling rig was, it's way over here. And yes, this is in, that section 34 that she said that she owns interest in. But if you look at where the first take point is, it doesn't have the first take point until it gets to the section to the north. 
So the people who are getting paid on this well are the people in this dashed line here. Okay. So first take point, last take point, proposed bottom hole location is right at the end of the section. So no, it doesn't look like if you own in section 34, you should getting, be getting paid on probably any of these wells that are being drilled surface location. They do this so that they can start producing right at the very beginning of that section, as opposed to having, see how this is say 583 feet between surface location and that section line. It takes a while to go down into the reservoir and build that curve because you're bending steel, right? It takes a while to bend steel um, distance because you can't bend it that much. You have to turn very, very slowly. It does bend, but you have to do it slowly um, in order to not cause problems. So they get further back and kind of like this is their runway before they hit the reservoir that they're wanting to get to so that they don't have to start tur be turning through the part that they're wanting to produce. They can already be there and be straight and going right through the reservoir. So yeah, it doesn't look like, and I, I'm willing to bet that all of the wells in this area are doing the same thing. I mean, I would bet almost 100% sure on which well she should be getting paid on, which one she shouldn't. Um, generally, you see like these straight lines, that is where the majority of the line is. It looks like it's lining up with the section. Like it's just probably, simple unit sections the same way that this one is where everyone in that section is considered part of the unit and uh, if we go back up to here it'll tell you if this is a pooled unit so a pooled unit means that everybody in that section is going to get paid on any it kind of expands your footprint dilutes it but it expands it so any well drilled anywhere in that hashed thing you're going to get paid on regardless of where your acreage is in this hashed thing so it, it essentially creates it like you have a bigger postage stamp of land in terms of minerals. So that's what pooling does versus just a straight up allocation unit. Um, that's probably going into too much, too much detail at this point, but on to the next one. So this next one is Reagan County. Uh, it's, I apologize in advance, but this is what you all have to deal with. So this is what we need to be going through but it is meets and bounds. It's gonna, we're gonna talk about terms like varas. I have a page that's really useful for these type of things. I'm gonna pause my recording and find that. Okay, so I'm putting it out there. I am not certified by NALTA or the um, Certified Professional Lease and Title Analyst Society, but they do have some really good information. And so I did go through the process to purchase this certification review manual. manual. Not because I plan on taking it, but because I like the information that's in this manual. So if we scroll down to, it's in the very beginning, so I'm gonna scroll down to this uh, meets and bounds. It goes over meets and bounds and what is meets and bounds and the history of the Spanish measurement system in Texas. Um, yeah, this is the land measurement and description section and this wasn't that expensive. I'm thinking it was less than a hundred dollars. I'm saying that just because I can't remember, but it's a very, very, it's a thousand page book and there's all the details. I think this is extremely well-priced uh, manual. I think I had to subscribe, no, no, um, become a member, like pay the membership fee and then buy the review manual. Um, but compared to like hiring a landman or especially if you're just interested in this stuff, it's worth, um, in my opinion, it's worth it. And so it's gonna go over like, what is a chain or a rod or all these things that, that surveyors use to describe their meets and bounds descriptions. Because basically what a surveyor does is they're marking out where the boundaries are. And that is what's set in stone as to what you actually own is what the surveyor file, like what is filed with the county saying, this is, this is the description, this was conveyed from one person to the next. And regardless of what you think, like if it changes in the future, you have to go back and tie it out. Now I'm, I'm probably explaining that terribly. I am, I am aware of this. I am married to a surveyor and he was already kind of groaning about an engineer explaining, surveying things, but hey, he doesn't have a YouTube channel. <laughs> this is, this is your introduction to surveying is, let me get to a useful graphic page. Okay, small, oddly shaped surveys in a Texas county. Boy, isn't that the truth. So a lot of um, South and East Texas is this meets and bounds description where you don't have a block or a township or a range or something. You, you have a 
survey that was done, a description of that survey, and the, you know, go west five yards to where the chicken laid an egg and then turn right and go to the old maple tree, that type of description. And they're describing what the properties were when they were conveyed from one, when they were originally carved up and then um, conveyed from the government to the first owner and then chained all the way down until you own it now. So this is where we get these really complex descriptions, like in this Reagan County example, where we have a whole bunch. This is from a, a 1932 deed. I believe that was the date. Let's zoom in a little more, be able to see. So this first paragraph is saying this person is conveying land to this person. And these older ones actually do say how much they're conveying, but it's usually a fraction. So you have to know how much they originally own to know how much they're conveying. So he's conveying an undivided 1 16th interest to all the oil and gas under this following property. But if they only owned half of it, then you now are, this person is actually conveying 1 32nd of an interest as opposed to 1 16th of an interest. So, and uh, okay, I say that I should back up and say, it really depends on how it's written. And I'm not an attorney. This is attorney related things in terms, this is a legal document that's filed. And legally, I'm actually relooking at this. It might be the exact way it's worded might be that regardless of, of how much they thought they were conveying, they are conveying one sixteenth of int an interest. Interpretation is really important for these things. So but we're not, this is not a video on how much you own. This is a video on where it is. So let's get back to the topic after that paragraph. Now we're starting on where, where this is. So beginning at a set stone on the south slope of a hill in the south line of section 18. This is the survey, the DMP survey for the northeast corner of survey number two in the name of Henry Eek. So a lot of times these names are the original owner, the person who the survey was originally done for back way in the day. I mean, we're already back in 1932. This is probably just saying, you know, 10 years ago when we gave this, um, did that survey for uh, Henry, <laughs> right? If you handed this to a surveyor, they could find it. If you really have one that there's confusion as to, or concern, or you're looking at selling it, you want to know exactly what you own, a landman or a surveyor would be a good place to go. If you're just trying to figure out approximately where this is, this is, this is, this, this is the video for you today. So we're going to start. We want to look for the DMP survey in Reagan County, Texas. Put your blinders on everything else for right now. So I'm going to go back to our software. We're going to start a new search. Go to, again, Texas. Sorry, a lot of these are in Texas. There is uh, one final example in Arkansas. Uh, so at least we'll hit one different state, but this is just the nature of who submitted stuff. So go ahead and make sure to subscribe if you want to get opportunities like this in the future. I, I like look, looking at y'all's stuff rather than just picking random stuff anyway. So we'll go to Reagan County. And, you know, usually West Texas is a little better with, with meets and bounds. But as you get further into the south part of West Texas, like um, this Upton and kind of here is th this stuff down here. So Reagan County, you are going to get into some of this stuff. So let's go back into, it was DMP. So let's search for DMP. So you can either type it in. We're, we're over here on the parcel search. So you can scroll down to DMP. Oh, here we go. DMP. So there aren't a whole lot of them. So I think it was an eight, like section 18. Was that the section name? Oh, I lost it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Section 18. DMP 18. All right, so now we're, so you can see why this is listed four different times because it's, it's section 18 is, is broken up into four different like subsections. Uh, we're gonna turn off the value layer again, just to make it a little cleaner. So there are wells going around there. If you just wanna like, so we already know that we're, we're kind of in this general area. If you wanted to zoom out and see all the DMP, um, so we have DMP 18, 17, 16, 15, yeah, so we're, we know we're, we're at least in this survey somewhere, just from that first line of the meets and bounds description. So beginning set in stone at the south slope of a hill in the south line of section 18. We know that we want to be on the south line of section 18. So that is down here. So we want to start somewhere down here. 
Now I did pull up one additional, there's, there's two additional resources that I like to use whenever I'm dealing with the meets and bounds issue. So the first one, again, you can probably get close enough by starting here, but if you want to get a little more precise, one side I like to use is the GLO. So this is the, um, the state public lands um, for Texas, and uh, they have a nice map. So I, I, I'm a little jealous of their map. I, I do like it. They use some things that cost some money that I am still working on getting into our tool. But we can go to Reagan County and go to, was it? it was somewhere down here, wasn't it? Yeah, kind of where everything gets jumbled in there. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So here. So with so here's that section 18 we were looking at. You can click on this and it will tell you, um, here's a survey, block, section, abstract, grantee. This is this is focused on the government lands, like the state lands. And so this is like what leases the state has. But you can find the general general location. And one of the things I like about this is you can toggle different layers. That should be a feature soon in our in our map, but until then, I go to other sources. So, let's go to. Uh, I want a like a aerial view. Let's go to. No, although you can see the hill, there are definite hills here. All right, so now we have a like an aerial view of what's going on because a lot of times meets and bounds descriptions, there's going to be a fence line or some like demarcation, like, oh, it's to the end of the road, or you can see the crops are a different color because it's a different owner of the land. Like it's not perfect, but we're not getting to perfect today. We're getting too close enough. So one way is to go about it here. So we can say, okay, it's along the South line of section 18. The other way, the other place I like to look is the county website. Most counties these days have a GIS viewer. The counties are focused on the surface lands, but a lot of times the surface lands are broken up similarly to how the minerals are broken up. Different owners, but at least the boundaries are close by. So the other thing I wanna pull up is, you just say Reagan County, Texas CAD. So central appraisal district, that's where we want to go. And the first thing that pops up is the map on the search. So this gets us to that. They're all going to have this. Some, some maps will be much better than others. Some will be terrible. Again, we can just zoom in and um, go to that jumbled mess area. But we're going to go ahead and turn on the hybrid imagery. And there, these imageries are going to have different dates on them. So you'll probably see different things based on... Um, but there's like a little stream coming down along the bottom here. Oh, it's over here. Okay. Ah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, there's all the there's all the pads. So these these squares where you can see that the land has been cleared, those are what they call the pad for the well. That's the they clear the land, put a whole bunch of caliche on the ground and spread it out to make a nice firm base for like trucks and stuff to drive on. Uh, and this is the part that the surface owner usually gets paid for. And so um yeah, so we have here and the nice thing here is you can click on it and see who owns the surface and there's usually a legal description associated with that and if there's been any subdivision of these properties um, from a surface perspective that will usually show up um, in more detail than just the land um, abstracts themselves uh, and you can see this in areas that are more developed like cities or um, just really anywhere that has a lot of the, the surface acreage being um, divided into farms and neighborhoods and houses. Uh, and it just gives you another place to look up um, legal descriptions and subdivision codes and like maybe it's saying of this subdivision. A lot of times I can go to the, the county appraisal district map and get more of a subdivision name. So if we go back to our meets and bounds description, we're starting along the south line for the northeast corner of survey number two and the northwest corner of this survey. So a lot of times I like to start drawing it out at this point, even if I don't know which direction I'll, I'll be going. You know what, we'll do paint. Good old paint, south line of 18 for the northeast corner. And again, I'm not a surveyor, this is, I struggle through these every time I have to do this. So for the northeast corner of survey number two and the name and the northwest corner of this survey, north, south, west, east. So northeast is gonna be 
northeast corner of survey number two. So whatever starting point that they're talking about is the northeast corner of survey number two and the northwest corner of this survey. The southwest corner of section 18 and the northwest corner of said Henry Ike survey. So here's 18. So this is the Henry Ike survey. Establishing the starting point of these meets and bounds is usually the hardest part. And then you can use distances and measures to go from there. Did I miss anything? The southwest corner of survey. Okay, so the southwest corner of section 18 and the northwest corner of said Henry Hicks survey bears. Okay, here's a new thing for us today. It's saying that this corner, there's another corner. So let's say that this line goes like this. Uh, this boundary corner is a distance from the starting point. And that distance is south 77 degrees west. So how you read that is you say it's in the direction of south, but it's 77 degrees west of south. So if you think of a compass, this angle here, can y'all even see that? Nah. Okay. Think of a compass, this beautiful compass drawing here. <laughs> you go down south and then you go west 77 degrees. So 77 degrees. Yes. I'm so I'm left-handed and I'm having to write with the mouse with my right hand. So please excuse my, my drawing here. Um, but that so it's saying in this direction. You go 1,304 varas. So VRS is a vara. So you want to go 1,300. So let's together, let's walk through that one also. So the um, Alta Manual, this, this has the description of what a um, vara is. So um, one foot is 0.36 varas. Um, one vara is 2.78 feet. And I will say there are multiple different types of varas. So there's like a Spanish vara and, um, I'm sure this mentions it somewhere that there's different, um, you know, just for fun, they'd like to add multiple different types of varas, but just make sure this is where it'd probably be helpful to go to Laman if you're getting like real precise with this, but generally you can just say one vara is 2.8 seven, eight feet. So we're going to go, going to go with that. So 2.78 times 1304, 3,625 feet. So we'll go back to this guy. So this is saying you go Southwest 3,625 feet. So if we go back to saying that corner is that distance away, that's a pretty far distance actually. Okay. Here's survey two. You see the number two here? This is survey two. This is survey 18. And so it's saying that where, and again, land surveyors are probably cringing that I'm guessing at this, but I feel like that's a valid guess. So this point here sounds like where, uh, let's see, what did we say? We drew that that doesn't make sense. I must have drawn that wrong. Where two and 18 come together. So maybe it's over here. The northeast corner of survey two. The northeast corner of survey two um, probably is here. I don't. I think they would call this a different. See, this is kind of a weird. Oh, here's Ike. We have the name Ike. Okay, cool. So that's another hint. We have that Henry Ike name in the survey here. So, okay, cool. We're probably talking about somewhere around here. Okay, and then it's also saying that to the southwest is the corner where the Henry Ike meets 18. Okay, yeah, so to the southwest is where Henry Ike meets 18. You know, I'm guessing that we're starting around here. There's thus multiple, multiple reasons of thinking that. But again, we're getting close to it. Um, I think one of these has a measuring tool. Oh, which one? Here we go. The CAD has a measuring tool. You can clear that and let's see, just see how far area we want to do distance. So from here to here, oh look, that's right about 30, 3,600 feet 
takes you from here to here. And if you think about on a compass, um, 90 degrees. So if you're going south, zero degrees west, you go straight south. If you're going south 90 degrees west, you're going straight west. So south 77 degrees is about here. So yeah, this is, oh look, that's almost exact. That's 30,627 feet versus our 25 feet. So I bet this is, so yeah, I'm feeling much more confident that this is the starting point of the survey now. Okay, because like I said, the starting point is the hard part. So once you get the starting point, the rest of it we can do. We can do it. Okay, so thence, so the rest of this, every time you see a thence, they're giving you another instruction. So pretend like you have someone talking in your ear and you're walking and they're telling you where to go. So once you, once like you're at that starting point and then they're telling you, okay, then you go south 13 east. Now remember how we, we used our little thing? So it goes south 13 east, which, sorry, I drew this wrong. It should have been like over here. Ignore that. So south 13 east is south not much east, right? So go back to here. South 13 east was the upper northeast line of the Henry Egg survey. Okay, so we wanna follow that line and we're gonna go 2390 varas. And if we remember a vara, 2390 varas times 2.78. Okay, so we'll go back to this CAD, which has the little measuring tool. And we'll say we're at our starting point, which is that green dot. So, oh look, it happens to follow along this blue line here. And I'm gonna call that pretty gosh darn good with 6,000 and just kind of say, okay, it's probably where this, this boundary is here. Okay, so that is the first call with the northeast line. That is our number two. And so we did. We just did this one. I'm to a stone mound for corner of said survey number two and southwest corner of this survey. So that gets us to the southwest corner of the survey that we're we're trying to find. So and that makes sense because if you were, to, I'm guessing it's just going to be this this um, abstract forty fifty six here or property number 4056, whatever the cat is using here. Um, that's probably what we're gonna be outlining. And so we're pro on, a, on an easier to see map, it's probably going to be, um, I'm just guessing this. This is probably what we're, what we're gonna end up outlining. I don't wanna quite add it yet, but this part here. <sighs> okay, so thence north 77 degrees east, with the lower northeast line of survey two, 1,463 varas, 1,463 times 2.78. So 4,000, about 4,060 feet north, 77 degrees east. So mostly east is what that's saying. We'll start a uh, new, so here to here. Oh look, 4,000, this isn't the best measurement tool. Why did it stop working here to here? All right, you know what? We're just going to call it. It's going It's going this direction to here. Mostly east, a little bit north of east, here to here, about 4,000 feet. In order to make this not a, an hour-long video, I'm going to just assume that the rest of this meets and bounds is describing how to get from here to here to here to here and then back to the starting point. And so you're gonna see thence north with the west line, then south with that line, thence north this many degrees. And just keep following that same um, process until you get to where it says, thence back to the point of beginning. Uh, and we'll probably see that in a second here. Um, yeah, uh, it spans both. So the point of beginning is is right here is what it's, what it's ending saying. The above described tract of land containing 200 and is that 20 or 30? 220 acres. So this is the other thing I like to look for is, is it usually says how many acres it just described. It's possible that it didn't describe all of what I'm assuming it's describing, just not going all through it. But that's where we can get out of here and click on here and see, 
okay, that legal acreage is 640 acres. So it might be describing like just um, part of this, or maybe there's some other reason that it's less than 640 acres. That's where you would just follow this same process. Uh, you can use the, like I said, the county site. You can click and see the tracks and see that there's um, on this measurement tool, this first one is acres. So if you wanted to measure um, number of acres, you know that you're starting here, you know that you're going here, you know they're going here. Like maybe it's describing something like this or something, you know, like maybe it cuts in. And I apologize if the person who sent, the, sent this to me was wanting me to do that. Maybe they got the first like three steps and they're like, can you just figure out the last couple of steps? Yeah, I can um, again. Uh, but to make this not a, an hour long video and I'm sure y'all are already like struggling watching me try to, to slodge through this, but that's where you would combine the acreage call with the um, things that you're mapping out and try to get to something that all the pieces are lining up together. Final one for today. So I've already been filming for over an hour, almost an hour and a half. So hopefully I can like cut this down and make it less than an hour. But I mean, I told y'all ahead of time to grab some coffee. We're gonna be chatting a while. Uh, so this next one is in Arkansas. So I told you we weren't gonna be in Texas the whole time. Um, this next one also has quite a bit of properties. So we're not gonna go through all of them, but I will hit a couple. We'll see how many we can hit without making it again too long. Also at some point, it's the end of the day for me and I'm filming at home. <laughs> and so at some point my house will suddenly have um, a seven year old and my husband here. So it won't be as quiet for filming. So that will be our hard cutoff. So if it stops abruptly, that is why. So getting to it. So here is a deed where Mr. James is the deceased. Mary is the trustee of his trust. And this is conveying, like saying what properties are going from the trust to the people who are inheriting into the trust or from the trust. This doesn't give us a whole lot of information. It's just saying all the royalties, right? Uh, what we're looking for is the exhibit A here, where it says all the property described in exhibit A. So if we go down, here's exhibit A. Now, the nice thing about Arkansas is that it follows a different type of survey system than Texas, which is why I was glad that we got an example outside of Texas. Texas kind of covers a lot of bases. Like if you know how to find stuff in all the different counties in Texas, then you can cover the rest of the state just fine, or the rest of the nation just fine. But if we go to um, this manual here and we rotate this page, something called the public land survey system that is a much more nice survey system. Will this turn? Yes, okay. So this is outlining every state that is shaded here uses the public survey system. And that's where you're gonna have township range section. And you're going to have, uh, it's going to be look like nice little squares. It's going to be easy to find stuff. And then you're going to have like within that one mile by one mile section, which is what every section is going to approximately be. You're going to have descriptions of like the Northwest quarter, the Northeast quarter, the South half of the South half, like weird, weird letters all pushed together. But it's, it, there's, it, there's a systematic way that you can actually interpret that. And again, that's why I like this particular manual because this is the township range system. Um, as you go north, you're gonna get four, like you have, a, you have a central like point where you're gonna have, everything's gonna span from. You're gonna have 36 sections in each block. So that's what, six by six? So every six miles, so here to here, six miles, that's gonna be township one north, and then two north, and then three north, and then four north. And then as you go east, if you think of this as the Y axis is your townships and your X axis is your ranges, and that's how you locate what grid that you're supposed to be in. And then within that, you have the section numbers. And so how this is arranged is this is one township. Within that township, it's always going to start with the section number one in the top um, right corner, that northeast corner of that township will be section number one. It's going to flow uh, to the left. So it's always going to be one, two, three, four, five, and then kind of snake through the township, 
with your section numbers and your section locations. So, and then it will start over once you get to the next township down. This is always going to be the case. Um, sometimes you won't get through all of the section numbers and before you run out of county um, or state, but it's always going to use the same pattern. So then within that section, so we're just looking at a single section now, we're going to have, it's going to be broken up into something kind of like this. And this is, this is the part that usually trips people up. They can usually find the township and the range and the section through different means. But when you get to this part, this is where it starts to look like Greek and knowing how to interpret what it's saying is useful. And uh, I've heard the advice to read it backwards and that helps, that helps explain it. We'll go through a couple examples with this, uh, with this um, Columbia County acreage because I already see the example. So like I said, there's, there's probably, there's two pages of these type of properties here. And so we'll just start with the first one. So Lafayette County, sorry, I'm, I lived in Lafayette, Louisiana. So if I say it weird, um, that's why you know, I'm supposed to say it Lafayette or something, Arkansas, I apologize. I'm going to say it the Louisiana way. I just, I can't help it. Um, so we're going to go to that County in that County in Arkansas, jump to Arkansas and Lafayette boop zooms it down to it and we'll go ahead and make it to where we can see both kind of there we go so section 29 township 19 range uh township 19 south range 23 west that comma is in a weird place so um how this how our system has it is once the township first so 19 south and then 23 West and it's section 29. So again, we're kind of reading it backwards. So we're in Arkansas, we go to Lafayette County, we go to 23 West, we go to 19 South, and then we look for section 29. So that brings us to where it will zoom to that and we're gonna look for the North half. So we're in, we're, we're there. So if I go back to this manual, uh, the north half is going to be, I mean, this is almost too, this is almost too simple of an example to use this, this diagram, but uh, we're going to be looking at the north half of this section because that's how it's going to be breaking it up is by, um, you're going to have some combination of these things where it might be the east half of the northwest quarter of the southeast quarter. Um, and it might, you might just keep combining Easts and wests and halves and quarters together until you narrow it down to these little tiny things. So like this particular one is the south half of the northwest quarter of the southwest quarter of the southeast quarter. And that describes this, right? So completely understandable how that's hard to follow along. I like to draw a little diagram. Um, like for example, I'll draw a single section, I'll split it in half and then I'll start uh, split it into quarters and then I'll start reading the description. And if it says North half, I'm like, cool, that's all of this stuff. And then I'll draw that out. If it says the South half of the Southeast quarter, I'll like, okay, which one of these is the Southeast quarter? Here's a Southeast quarter. All right. It said South half. So that's here. Cool. I'm going to color that in with my fancy, fancy coloring that y'all can barely see because it's hardly on the screen there. Now you can see my pretty drawing. But this first example is simple. So it's just the north half. So here's, get my highlighter, north half of section 29. So going back to here, and this is, we'll just use this as the same um, numbering system that they have. This is tract number one, we'll call it. Go back to here. Oh, I hear people home. North half, add to properties, tract one, and save. Hello, daughter. Something tells me you filmed a video today. I am currently filming a video. Hi. Oh. Hi. That is my cue that this video is long enough and done. Let me know if y'all have any questions on how to find uh, the rest of these uh, or this type of thing. Again, this, this particular reference, I will put a link to it in the description. Let me know if y'all have questions. Thanks and bye. Thank you. Say bye. Bye. Bye.